All right, folks. So today we're going to talk a little bit about calipers. These can be very inexpensive, like this set right here. Uh, they can be moderately priced, like this set here, or they can get very, very expensive. The reason I want to do this video is I want to talk a little bit about the differences between these two sets of calipers, and I want to talk about a couple of different ways that we make measurements using them. And then hopefully this will clear up a little bit of confusion that folks have when using things like these calipers. So the first ones we're going to take a look at are these, and this is a pretty generic no-name brand. Uh, you can see these on eBay, uh, Amazon, AliExpress for about five to six bucks, give or take, uh, and that's delivered. That was including shipping. I got these a few years ago. These are six inch, 150 millimeter calipers. Um, and like I mentioned, they were relatively, in relatively inexpensive. Um, they do run off of a battery right here and you have to be careful because this battery cover does come off quite easy. And um, I did have to replace this battery at one point in time, but it was very simple and easy to do. This is a little bit more expensive set of calipers. It's all metal and the brand name one here is Knump, Knump, I don't know how you say that. Um, they're all metal and they're significantly heavier and more robust than this set. Um, you just move this caliber piece here by sliding your thumb on this, I don't know, thumb ramp, I guess is what you call that. This set of calipers has that thumb ramp, but it also has this wheel here and you push and pull on this wheel and your caliper moves that way. Also, when you get to a certain measurement, you can tighten this up and lock it into place. That way you would have a static measurement there. Uh, this does not have a lock and it moves a little bit easier. With both of these, you can switch uh, millimeters to inches. Here, let me hold it up here so you can see that there's a button for that. You can turn the calipers on or off and then you can zero them wherever they are. Now, when you turn these off and you turn them back on, it should automatically zero. It does not on these. Let's see if it does it on these. So let me go ahead and zero, close, off, and on. All right, well, let's take that back. They don't self-reset. Mistake on my part. And this one has millimeters, inches, and F. I don't even know what F means. These calipers, the $30 ones, um, came with this box or this kit. And I like that because I can keep it nice and safe and hopefully not lose them. It comes with some instructions. They were in a plastic bag. They come with this silica gel pack. I'm just going to throw that out right now so I don't make any mistakes in the future. And it comes with two batteries, which is awesome. And then it comes with this adjustment tool should you need it. And it's a really small pair or it's a really small Phillips screwdriver. All right, let me get all this stuff out of the way and then we can keep going here with our measurements. So let's take a look at a couple different things and measure them and talk about some getcha gotchas uh, that you might see when measuring things. So here I just have a small aluminum box and when you measure stuff, uh, this is how you measure the width of something. And you just go ahead and you put it in there and you close it up and here we have 30.7 millimeters. You want to make sure that stuff is square in here when you're doing a measurement. Just the slightest canter in there and then your measurements are messed up. So we have 30.7. Let's go ahead and measure on this one and see what we get. See, I don't have them all the way. It's not all the way square in there. So here we go. And we end up with 30.86. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that this one has two digits after the decimal. This one does not. So that's a little something to take into consideration when you're doing this. The other thing I wanted to show is how you measure inside of something. So here we just have a, a powdered iron uh, toroidal core. And say I want to know what the inner diameter of the circle is. So what I would do is I would just go back, make sure that I am zeroed. And then I can go ahead and start to pull these apart. And as I pull them apart, I go ahead and I get 14.44. And we're at 14 and a half, 14.51. So you just want to make sure you get these in there and get the measurements, make sure everything's straight. So we're at 14.49. We'll call it that. And let's go ahead and come over here and do the same measurement. We have 14.5. So they're close. This one not having that other digit likely rounded up. I don't think it's a problem. I've had these for a few years and I use them often and never had a huge issue or problem with them. 
Uh, these will now be relegated to backup duty, and these will be the primary calipers that I do use. Let's just take a look at a couple of other quick measurement techniques. Um, let's say you want to measure the depth of something like this box. So one of the ways that we can do this is by taking advantage of this piece here. So as I pull these calipers apart, let me loosen it up. We get this, I don't want to call it a probe, but we get this measuring device that comes out the bottom of this. And what I can do is I can just go ahead and place this inside just like that. Now what I want to make sure is, is that this bar is going completely down and is flat on the inside of this box. And then I just go down and I measure all the way. I want to make sure I'm holding it straight. And if I take a look, we have 25.3, I'm sorry, 25.38. Let's go ahead and do the same measurement with this one. And we have 25.4. So that's pretty similar. The last measurement that I wanted to cover, and we're going to do it with this particular device, is what we would call a step measurement. So this mounting bracket that comes off of this device, let's say I wanted to measure how far up this piece went. Like I was maybe going to mount this in some sort of box or connection or something like that. So what we do is we use the step function of our calipers here. So what I can do is I pull this down and you can see we actually have a step right here. So what I would do is take this part and put it flat, and then I would adjust my calipers like this. And again, I want to make sure that I do this very carefully, and I make sure that everything is squared up correctly. And then I just go ahead and I make a measurement, and then you can see when I measure here, let's make sure I got this right. I am at 13.1, 13.0 millimeters. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here. And this gives me 12.93. Let's do this one, one more time. 12.4. That's not right. Here we go. We got 13.1. So there are some differences when you do this, but uh, I would expect to see a little bit of a tolerance gap on your calipers. Okay, and I think that that's really going to wrap it up. I will have links to both of these in the description below if you wanted to check them out in a little bit more detail. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.